you are welcome to class today we are going to be looking at rational and irrational numbers at the end of this lesson you uh, should be able to do the following one distinguish between rational and rational numbers secondly use trial and improvement methods to calculate approximations values of square root and lastly you're supposed to be able to find an approximate value of pi now what are rational numbers they are numbers that can be written as exact fractions or ratios they include numbers like one four and you know 70 fractions decimals and uh, mixed fractions uh, improper proper fractions come to talk about it irrational numbers they are numbers that cannot be written as exact fractions or ratios they are decimals extends without end and without recurring numbers that involves square root x in this situation can be an old number it can be a decimal we have pi and you know, all sorts of numbers that are irrational numbers now you know that recurring numbers recurring decimals they are rational numbers now i want you to watch the video this next video from bhn maths for better understanding thank you in this video we'll take an introductory tour through the land of rational numbers and take a glimpse at the intriguing and somewhat mysterious world of irrational numbers to begin our journey let's look at what it means for a number to be rational in order for a number to be considered rational it only has to meet one simple requirement we have to be able to write it as a fraction where both the numerator and denominator are integers. The most obvious rational numbers are already written in this form. The integers themselves are rational numbers as they can easily be written as fractions with a denominator of 1. Sometimes it's not as obvious that a number is rational. For example, consider the number 1.73. Can we write this number as a fraction using only integers? We most certainly can. It's 173 over 100. To arrive at this result, we could use the fact that division by 100 ultimately moves the decimal point back two places. Alternatively, we could start by writing 1.73 as a fraction with a denominator of 1. We know that multiplying both the numerator and denominator by the same non-zero number does not affect a fraction's value. So we can use multiplication by 100 to get rid of the decimal in the numerator. And that leaves us with integers for both the numerator and the denominator. Based on what we've seen here, we can quickly conclude that all terminating decimals are rational numbers. But what about non-terminating decimals? Although these beasts are a little tougher to tame, it can be shown fairly quickly that as long as the digits after the decimal point have a repeating pattern, we can indeed write them as fractions using only integers. To see how we can go about rewriting non-terminating decimals in fraction form, check out the video on that topic. At this point, we've seen that a lot of numbers out there are indeed rational. And perhaps you're wondering, are there any numbers that cannot be written as a ratio of integers? There are, and they are called irrational numbers. Showing why a number is irrational is significantly more complicated than showing why a number is rational. For that reason, we'll cover some proofs of irrationality in separate videos. But for now, let's take a look at some types of numbers that are irrational. First on the list, we have decimals that do not terminate and do not repeat. There's no way to write these messy creatures as an integer divided by an integer. To catch a glimpse of why, try carrying out some divisions of integers where the result is a non-terminating decimal. Whether you use the traditional long division algorithm or another approach, you'll quickly see that it's only a matter of time before the digits after the decimal point begin repeating. Many square roots are also irrational. Obviously, square roots of perfect squares like 4, 9, 16, and 25 are whole numbers, which are indeed rational numbers. But if we square root a whole number that is not a perfect square, the result is irrational. To see why, check out the video dedicated to that topic. What about square roots of decimals? Well, it depends on what the decimal is. 
For example, the square root of 1.21 is exactly 1.1, which, as we know, is rational. But the square root of 1.31 is irrational. So why the difference? Well, without diving deep into the underlying theory, which actually involves several laws related to exponents, the main idea is that if we can write the decimal as a ratio of two perfect squares, its square root will be rational. Finally, there's another group of irrational numbers that I'll simply refer to as special numbers. Pi is an example of one of these numbers. We know pi as the result that we get when we divide a circle's circumference by its diameter. The proof of why this famous number is irrational uses significantly higher level math and is definitely beyond the scope of this video. Another interesting irrational number is known as Euler's number, or simply E. This fascinating number, named after Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, has special properties related to rate of change and shows up all over the place in math, from problems involving interest rates to those involving probability. It also secures a position in what is considered by many to be the most beautiful equation in mathematics, Euler's formula. So there it is, a quick overview of the difference between rational and irrational numbers.